Three months ago, I made a video about a Void Hunter build that revolutionized the way hundreds of thousands of Guardians play Destiny. Then two weeks later, Bungie overhauled it with Void 3.0 and completely changed what this build was capable of. Its strengths, weaknesses, synergies, and playstyles got completely turned upside down by the flip of a switch. So, I took the past three months to rediscover, relearn, and remaster this playstyle so I can show you exactly how to use it to be invincible. And let me just tell you, it's even stronger than before. I must warn you though, as once you watch this video, you will never look at Destiny the same ever again. Everything else will simply feel inferior. Well of Radiance Warlock, Thunder Crash Titan, Stasis, anything, it all just doesn't compare. If you watch this video in its entirety, not only will you become a better player than you ever thought imaginable, you'll also become, quite literally by every sense of the word, invincible. I'll first teach you the basics of the Void Hunter Night Stalker subclass along with the ideal aspects and fragments you'll want to run. After that we will discuss everything you need to know about the greatest exotic armor piece to ever exist in Destiny, Omnioculus. After that we can talk about all of the armor mods and stats to complement and enhance your playstyle, which by the way this guide is built to stand the test of time, so I will not be discussing any seasonal mods in this video. Next up is all of the ability combos and rotations you want to get used to. And finally, we can look at the overall playstyle, where we will talk about the mindset you want with this build, what role you play into your team composition, and how to use your invincibility to be a truly lethal assassin. And at the end, we will wrap up with a special something that was requested by tons of people from the first edition of this guide. With this video, I will make you a Destiny legend, win your subscription, and change the way you play the game forever. So allow me to show you a new way to experience destiny. Chapter 1 is all about the tools in your toolkit. These are the basics, yes, but that doesn't mean that they are simple by any means. In fact, most players don't even know most of the information I'm about to tell you. Understanding all of the quirks and nuances of your kit is essential to mastering this playstyle. If you don't have a strong foundation to build up from, studying the more complex aspects of this class is pointless. There is no better place to start than with the Snare Bomb, a throwable smoke bomb with an explosion radius of 5 meters that weakens enemies hit, increasing their damage taken by 15% for 5 seconds. With the Trapper's Ambush aspect granting one fragment slot, our Snare Bomb gains the added utility of making guardians within the explosion radius invisible for 5 seconds. But this throwable smoke is actually pretty useless in most circumstances, because with this aspect we also gain access to the quick fall ability, which I am officially dubbing as Shadow Dive, because it sounds way cooler. Shadow Dive is an air move ability, similar to Shatter Dive, that consumes a melee charge and does an amplified version of all of the snare bomb's effects. The weakened debuff applied to enemies lasts for 10 seconds instead of 5, the explosion radius is 10 meters instead of 5, and the invisibility granted to guardians lasts for 7 seconds instead of 5. This ability is not only the bread and butter of the subclass, but also the glue that holds everything else together. You honestly won't believe how strong this ability is until I show you some of the crazy things that you can do with it in chapter 4 of this video. It opens so many doors for us when utilized in combination with other abilities that we will touch on later. One of those abilities we can talk about now though is our class ability, Gambler's Dodge. This dodge refunds a melee charge when used within 14 meters of an enemy, and with our second aspect, Vanishing Step, not only do we get an additional two fragment slots for a total of three, but we also go invisible when using this dodge. If you use the dodge while visible, or under invisibility effects from things like a throwable smoke or fragment perks, you go invisible for five seconds. However, if you use this dodge while still in invisibility from a shadow dive, you go invisible for seven seconds instead of five. Now that we understand all of the ways we can go invisible, let's talk about a mechanic I like to call the grace period. The grace period is a one second timer that begins immediately after going invisible where you can do absolutely anything without losing the invisibility buff. The grace period unfortunately cannot be utilized when going invisible from a shadow dive or a dodge since their animations do not complete until after the grace period expires. But you can utilize the grace period when using a throwable smoke bomb to throw a grenade or shoot a tether immediately afterwards without losing your invisibility. Moving on to fragments, we have three slots to work with. 
The first we want to talk about is Echo of Obscurity, which makes us invisible for 5 seconds after using a finisher on an enemy. This allows us to maintain even more invisibility uptime while also being able to safely finish high priority targets surrounded by a lot of ads. In slot number 2, we want to see Echo of Persistence, which increases the duration of all void buff effects, including invisibility, by 2 seconds. This means that our throwable smoke, vanishing step dodge, and Echo of Obscurity invisibility effects will now last for 7 seconds instead of 5 and our Shadow Dive invisibility will last for 9 seconds instead of 7. And yes, if you use your Vanishing Step dodge while under the invisibility effects from a Shadow Dive, that will also refresh your invisibility to 9 seconds instead of 7. Finally, we want Echo of Remnants, which increases the duration of our damage over time grenades from 4 seconds to 6 seconds. You'll learn why that duration increase is so important in Chapter 3. Finally, to wrap it up, let's talk about our other base abilities. Mobius Quiver is the obvious choice for our super thanks to its amazing burst damage capabilities, and Vortex Grenade is our grenade of choice as it's the most reliable grenade for killing weaker enemies in PvE. Before we move on to Chapter 2, where we will talk about the secrets of the strongest armor piece in Destiny history, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button if you learned something new in this section, or even if you're just enjoying the video. With that taken care of, let's talk about Omnioculus. The Omnioculus chess piece exotic seems simple on paper, but there are a few things hiding under the hood that are crucial to understanding how to make the most out of it. First and foremost, this armor piece grants you an additional melee charge. Simple enough. The second piece of this exotic is a 50% damage resistance buff while under the effects of invisibility. This includes any allies that you make invisible as well. This is not only enough damage resistance to save you from a lot of damage over time effects and hard hitting activities like Grandmaster Nightfalls, but it is also equivalent to the damage resistance granted by Protective Light before it received its massive nerf in the Witch Queen patch. What's better is you don't need to have your shields broken for this damage resistance to take effect like with Protective Light. It's up whenever you are invisible, which is effectively 100% of the time, which you'll learn how to do perfectly in Chapter 4. The final piece of the Omnioculus Toolkit is the Melee Energy Refresh. When making allies invisible with a throwable smoke or shadow dive, you receive 50% melee energy back per guardian made invisible, not including yourself. This means that if you make two allies invisible, that melee charge is refunded to you in full. It is incredibly important, however, to note that you only get refunded melee energy if you make a visible ally invisible. Applying invisibility effects to an already invisible guardian will not refund melee energy regardless of the source of their invisibility. Now that you understand everything being granted by our armor, let's talk about all of the mods that we are utilizing to truly make us invincible. Mods and stats are incredibly important to this build and playstyle, but build crafting can be a bit meticulous, so I've taken the liberty of making your life a little bit easier. In the description of this video, you can find a Destiny Item Manager link that will automatically create a loadout containing these mods, assuming that you own all of them. No need to say thanks either, you can just tap the like and subscribe buttons while you're down there instead. Nonetheless, having them equipped is only 10% of the equation. Understanding what they do and how to utilize them is what will truly make us invincible. Like I said in the intro, I will not be discussing seasonal mods in this section. I encourage you to utilize them where you can, but by no means is any seasonal mod required for this build. With all that said, let's get started with Utility Kickstart, a 1 energy stasis class item mod that refunds 15% of your class ability on use. This brings our dodge from a 19 second cooldown to a 16 second cooldown at tier 10 mobility. The next set of mods revolve around Elemental Wells. Elemental Wells are basically miniature elemental orbs of light that recharge your regular abilities instead of your super. They last on the ground for 20 seconds and when picked up refund 10% of your lowest charge ability or 10% of all abilities if the element of the well matches your currently equipped subclass. The first of these is a 2 energy void mod, Reaping Wellmaker, which spawns a void elemental well from your next weapon final blow after activating your class ability. Next up is a 3 energy neutral mod, Elemental Orb coordinates, which will spawn an elemental well matching the element of your subclass with grenade final blows once per grenade. Since we are using a void subclass, these will of course be void elemental wells. After that is a 2 energy solar mod, Bountiful Wells, which creates a duplicate of every elemental well that you create, meaning you'll create two void elemental wells from both Reaping Wellmaker weapon final blows and elemental ordnance grenade kills. Finally, we have a 1 energy void mod, Well of Utility, which grants an 
additional 10% class ability energy when picking up a Void Elemental Well. Now, based on the descriptions alone, most will probably not realize the true strength of this combination of mods. What really enables these mods is the specific combos and rotations that we will talk about in the next chapter. But before we get there, it's important to touch on what armor stats you want to prioritize. The number one thing you need to shoot for before absolutely anything else is 100 mobility. Your dodge is not only an invisibility timer extension, but also an additional smoke bomb charge on a 16 second cooldown if used in range of an enemy. As such, having this up as fast as possible at all times is paramount. After that, you can go two different directions based on your experience level. If you are a beginner with this build and don't have the ranges of the dodge to refresh your melee charge down pat, I would recommend prioritizing strength second. It will offer significantly more forgiveness in the event that you use your dodge too far away from an enemy and miss out on the melee charge refresh. If you are a more experienced hunter user and can reliably get that melee charge refresh with your dodge every time, you'll want to prioritize discipline second. This will allow you to have higher grenade uptime, which in turn will allow you to create more elemental wells with elemental ordnance. Congratulations on making it this far. I admire your dedication to mastering this build and playstyle. You now have every piece of knowledge there is to know about all of the tools in your toolkit. To become truly invincible though, you have to understand exactly how to use them. So let's talk about how we can put those tools to use by going over all of your combos and rotations. In this chapter, we are going to start with the simple combos and work our way up to the more complex ones. The first set of combos involves using your Shadow Dive to animation cancel any action while also immediately bringing you into invisibility. The first is the Grenade Dive combo, which of course allows you to create two Void Elemental Wells thanks to Bountiful Wells and Elemental Ordnance if you get a Grenade Kill. After that is the Smoke Dive combo. Thanks to the two melee charges from Omnioculus, we can use this combo both in a support fashion and offensive fashion. The support version involves us making an ally that is far away from us invisible with a throwable smoke to keep them safe from any danger, while following up with a dive to shroud ourselves. The offensive version is the same idea, but with throwing a smoke at a pack of enemies to weaken them before following up with a dive to make ourselves invisible. The next combo is an incredibly simple but important one in the res dive combo. This will allow you to safely res any dead fire team member regardless of where they are or how many enemies are surrounding them by making them invisible immediately as they spawn back in. For this combo, you want to activate the Shadow Dive when you are about 80% through their revive. The Invis Finisher combo involves utilizing the Grace Period to safely finish a target in a dangerous area. Simply use your throwable smoke bomb at the target as you press your finisher key at the same time. Your smoke bomb should detonate as you move in for the finisher, and as long as you press the finisher key during that one second Grace Period, you'll remain invisible throughout the full duration of the finisher. The next two combos are incredibly simple in the Shoot Dive and Shoot Dodge combos. These simply involve shooting a bullet to damage or kill an enemy and then immediately diving or dodging back into invisibility. You want to utilize the shoot-dodge combo if there is an additional enemy in range and if you are currently missing a melee charge, allowing you to refund it. Otherwise, you want to utilize the shoot-dive combo instead. It's important to note as well that with the shoot-dodge combo, you will be invisible for 7 seconds instead of 9 since you are not extending the duration of a shadow dive invisibility. These two combos are the basis for complementing infinite invisibility visibility, and once mastered will unlock your offensive capabilities with the class. Instead of using invisibility as a tool to hide, you'll also be using it as a tool to weave in and out of safety to practically assassinate enemies, only being visible when you are ready to kill. We said those combos complement infinite invisibility though, so let's talk about the rotation that will allow you to maintain infinite invisibility. The dive-dodge repeating combo is the key to that. You'll enter invisibility with your dive, giving you 9 seconds of invis. You'll let this timer run all the way down to 1 second, at which point you'll want to dodge next to an enemy to refresh your invis timer to 9 seconds and refund a smoke charge. You'll then use that refunded smoke charge to shadow dive once your dodge's invisibility timer hits 1 second, refreshing you back to 9 seconds. Once that 9 seconds runs down to 1 second, your dodge should be back up again. This combo sounds simple, and it is, but having the timings on it down pat is incredibly important because one small misstep can make everything go wrong. Refreshing your invisibility too early can 
result in your dodge not being able to recharge in time, and refreshing your shadow dive invisibility with your dodge too late will result in you exiting invisibility before the dodge goes off, which will only give you 7 seconds of invisibility instead of 9, which has a ripple effect of your dodge not being available for the next cycle. Once you master the base level rotation, you can begin to incorporate the complementary combos. For example, you can begin with the usual dive dodge to begin the rotation, then, once your timer hits 1 second, shoot an enemy immediately before executing your next shadow dive. This will also create two elemental wells that you can scavenge to refill all of your abilities if you kill that enemy. If multiple enemies are in the area, or if it's a tankier enemy, you can incorporate a shot before each reactivation of the invisibility instead of just the shadow dive. For example, use the shadow dive to initiate invisibility, then shoot right before you utilize the dodge to refresh invisibility and also refund a melee charge. Once that timer drops to 1 second, shoot an enemy before using your shadow dive, refreshing your invisibility and potentially creating two elemental wells if you kill the enemy. You can also incorporate your dive dodge combo into your revives, waiting until that timer drops to 1 second to complete the revive before diving to not only shroud your ally, but to also refresh your own invisibility timer without breaking your rotation. Now on their own, these combos might not seem impressive, but repeating them and chaining all of the different variations together will help have you clearing entire rooms of adds and even the most difficult activities without ever taking a single point of damage. It's not as quick or as explosive as other playstyles, but it is precise, calculated, elegant, and most importantly, unkillable. These combos and rotations are just baselines, however. As you practice and become more comfortable with the class, combos, and rotations, you'll find that different things work for different situations. With your growth of experience will also come a growth of your real-time decision-making ability that will allow you to remain safe and lethal in absolutely any circumstance. So, now that you know everything about your tools and how to use them, let's talk about the core philosophies of the play style and how you can execute them to perfection. This playstyle has three levels of prowess with each level incorporating all of the philosophies of the previous one. As you grow in experience, your goals and capabilities with the class will grow with you. If you are just starting out, your focus will be the safe playstyle. At this level, your focus is strictly on yourself and your goal is to never die. This is accomplished by maintaining infinite invisibility, which is accomplished by making the most out of your invisibility timers. For every second that your invisibility ticks, your abilities are passively regenerating, allowing you to continue the rotations necessary to remain shrouded. Your ultimate goal is to let those timers run as low as possible before refreshing your invisibility, while also mastering the timing of dodging before exiting invisibility to receive the 9 second refresh instead of only 7. As you continue to grow in experience and skill, you'll become the medic. At this level, your focus is your teammates. You've mastered the safe play style and will never die, but now it's time to prevent your teammates from dying as well. And should they die, you must be able to safely bring them back into the fight no matter the circumstance. This level requires proper utilization of the Omnioculus perks to give your teammates damage resistance from invisibility, while also refunding melee energy for yourself by making them invisible. Not only will you need to keep your own invisibility timers in mind, but you'll have to be conscious of theirs as well. It's important to note as well that any allies that are not using the Echo of Persistence fragment will only receive 7 seconds of invisibility from your shadow dive while you will be receiving 9. So making sure that you're around to refresh them when your timer is at 2 seconds is an integral part of keeping them safe. As you master everything there is to master about this playstyle, you'll become the Wraith. At this level, you'll unlock your offensive capabilities to the fullest extent. You've mastered being safe yourself and are able to properly protect your teammates on top of that, but now it's time to surgically and precisely neutralize every enemy that crosses your path. A Wraith will perfectly weave shots in between their invisibility cooldowns, either killing enemies to create elemental wells for additional ability energy, or chipping away at tankier, more lethal targets to bring their health down so they can be finished. A Wraith is a one-man army that can procedurally neutralize any and all enemy threats without ever being killed, shot, or even seen. These playstyles are rhythmic and complex. It will take time and practice for you to work your way up through the various echelons of Void Hunter mastery, but once you finally arrive at the pinnacle, you have one final step. Being a Wraith is an honorable and impressive accolade, but absolutely pointless if you don't look the part. 
Without a doubt, the most asked question from my previous guide was what my guardian's fashion was. So here you go. You have my full permission and appreciation to copy and or modify this look to your heart's content. Just make sure to give me a high five in the tower should we ever cross paths. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I would sincerely appreciate it if you would consider subscribing and leaving a like on the video if you did. If you have any additional questions about this build, Void Hunter, or Destiny as a whole, drop them in the comments below in my Discord server linked in the description or come to my live stream and ask me there. I would absolutely love to meet any and all of you over in the live Twitch chat. Thank you so much for watching and as always, have a great day.